Blog Talk Radio. about your Kundalini Awakening experience. That was a piece that was written in the 10th century by uh, Hildegard von Bingham, or otherwise known as Saint Hildegard, because she was a Kundalini active woman in the 10th century uh, in, uh, in, in parts of Germany. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. It was performed by a group named Shanti Shanti, S-H-S-A, a N T I, and then repeated, and uh, very, very, very serene, sacred uh, piece that that responds well to to my kundalini, other people's kundalini as well, and so I wanted to share that with you. And since we are not a commercial enterprise, uh, it can only help Shanti Shanti. 
to sell more of their albums. That would be on the East West album that they they produced a while back, and it is. Uh, it's hard. I'm not really getting the Latin name at the moment. I, I don't have the uh, the thing on that. It's uh, uh, Virginas Viritas or some sort of a thing, but you'll see it. And it's on there. And you can also go on. Uh, uh, if you have iTunes, if you have an Apple product, you can go into iTunes. You could uh, go to the East West album, and you can get it from there as well. I've used Shanti Shanti uh, since before I started teaching, because they they at first they were specializing in sacred chants in Sanskrit from India, and um, I do recommend them. For the chance, not necessarily for their other songs, which I feel are kind of not a part of, of, say, the sacred chanting. You you would know that, of course, I would have the sacred chants. You know, I, w- I would, would care far more about them than I would about any other kind of uh, song that they would write. Not that they're bad. They're not bad. It's just that for me, in my process, I was I was interested in the sacred Sanskrit chanting. Interesting story that I'll I'll uh, let you explore um, you know on their website and whatnot. So it is it's from Shanti Shanti. So hello and welcome everybody and, and I would like to welcome my co host uh and I won't do the same introduction that I have done with her in the past. But I would like to welcome Amelia Satara into the program. Hello Amelia if you're awake, if you're not in the shower, there you are. <laughs> I am here. Hello, Chris, and hello, listeners. Good to be here, as always, on a Wednesday. And um, That was beautiful, Chris. Um, I love that music. It is, it is so serene, and, and, and it is very sacred. It's devotional music for me. Um, I love it. It's, it's beautiful. Um, so... Maybe I'll begin, as I often and usually do, by giving people the address they can go to if they would like to support the work that Chrism does and, and make a donation. You can go to the website called ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com and on the upper right-hand corner, you will see a donate button. And... Um, Please, if you would like to make a donation, please do so. There's never any pressure for anybody to do it, and there's no expectation, indeed, for anybody to make a donation. But all donations and gifts are greatly received. So that is the address again, ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And just about the um, chat room, welcome everybody there. I'm looking at Julie and Elizabeth and Sashji. And a number of guests with numbers after them. Hello to you all. And Suka, good to see you as usual on a Wednesday. If any of you have any questions, phone in on the number, and that is 347 And maybe in the chat room, you would let us know if the sound is okay and your hearing chrism okay as well. And that's it, chrism. Looking forward to the show. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Amelia. And I, 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 too, would like to welcome everybody in the chat room, as well as everybody who is listening to the program in the archives. Hello to you. I would like to welcome all the sleepers, the people who listen to this program as they sleep. And uh, so I would like to welcome you and your Kundalini Awakening uh, expression as you experience this program in the dream state. So, today's program, I'd like to talk about the emotional controls that a person needs to to practice. You know, it doesn't matter really um, when you do it or under what circumstance you initiate emotional controls. What really matters is that you do it consistently. You don't get to do it and then and then think, oh, okay, it's all good. I did my emotional control. Therefore, I am now emotionally controlled. Uh, no, 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 no. This is an ego training here. 
Now, I have to say, you know, most of us in this United States and in Europe and and around the globe, really, are controlled by our egos. When we're born and we're based, it's all about survival, and the ego aids us in that level of existence, helping us to continue to exist uh, as we survive any different uh, areas and, and uh, challenges that early life offers us. When you have the kundalini, however, it's, you need to mature out of total dependence upon the ego and to bring emotional control into the picture. Now, to some degree, uh, at least, you know, from what I've observed uh, throughout my travels, you know, we learn the, the many different emotional controls that, that we need to, to practice while we're in society. You know, Society-based emotional control would be crying if you don't get your own way, at least not out loud. You can cry, a lot of people do, or whine or complain inside. But stupid boss, he didn't give my raise, and I deserve it. And, you know, or, you know, that stupid neighbor in his old blue pickup truck, oh my gosh, how can he stand to drive that? I hate to look at it in his driveway every day, and I have to look at it with my neighbor. Talk about um, there are many different ways that we use the ego as a way, as a continuing uh, force of control in our lives and how we relate with ourselves and how we relate with other people. Uh, so it's really important to constantly self-correct. You know, I don't care if you have a teacher or not, really. You could hear the word from me and then change the channel for the rest of your life. But if you practice the emotional controls, you will go much further into your kundalini than you otherwise would. And so now before I go on and on and on, you know, about this, I'd like to do a little bit of a sound quality check with our friends in the chat room. Uh, Fast G, if, if you could uh, maybe give us a call and report uh, how things are going uh, in the chat room, it would be much appreciated. I don't like to just talk on and on and on when people aren't hearing things clearly. So uh, if if somebody could call the number 347-934-0026, so let us know the sound quality that you're experiencing there in the chat room. I know there are other people who are listening on their computers right now, and I'd like to say hello to you. And and I'd like to say, uh, you know, you're welcome to call in at 347-406 and, and uh, report on sound quality as well. And um, how was the sound quality as regards to the uh, – this must be somebody here. I'll go – oh, it's a question. I and mean, there's a question on the new call. Oh, hello. 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 This is Foster. Hey, how's the sound quality, my friend? It's um, honestly, it's a little choppy, Master C. Um, ah, okay. Is it because yeah. I'm too loud? Um, I, I don't know really what it is. Um, you know, sometimes it it flows uh, very smoothly, and then other times it'll start the the, the chopping or choppiness. Was that during the music as well? No, no, uh, nor during when um, some Tara was speaking. Oh, um, so it's so, nice. <laughs> well, you know, it's that energy thing that we talked about. <laughs> Turn it down, Master C. Turn it down. <laughs> you know, it's funny you mention that. Um, as many of you know, um, the Kundalini definitely interferes with electronic instruments. I've been so blessed to have this iPad relatively unscathed, but I'm sitting here in my car. And uh, and uh, I you know right before the show like not five minutes before the show I was on uh, I was on Skype with Amelia trying to get a sound check for the music because I didn't want it to to be un, you know unfortunate for people and so I played it at a volume I like she said oh it's way too loud it's cutting out da 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 so I turned it way 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 down and then I started it again and we'll play. I turned the car off, turned it on again, it wouldn't play. I pressed the button, pulled it in, pulled it out, checked the volume, it wouldn't play. It wouldn't even play the radio. 
So I'm just like, oh, geez, you know. <laughs> and I gave up on it, but I did try it, and then it did work. So the music came through okay. That's good to hear. And so are you intermittently. At, intermittently. I'm, I'm trying to back up as far as I can. Maybe I should sit in the back seat. I don't know. I'll just... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Patsy. Okay. Thank, thank I'm heading off into the green. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, I think well, maybe maybe yeah. you should get into the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tilt the chair way back. Okay. I'm a John is also uh, John is also telling me that it was um, choppy upstairs when um, listening to you, but that the music was okay. And, and sometimes John. your volume goes up and down. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. All right. Way back now, I'm like, I'm in the low rider position here. Low rider. <laughs> and actually, Ju- Julie concurs. Fashchi was very clear, but you were still a bit choppy. <laughs> oh. oh, man. All right. So, um I'm going to turn the volume way down here on my voice. And it's almost, I feel almost like I'm in a in a vocal meditation thing now where I'm just kind of saying, Om Mane Padme Om, or Om, all to myself um, right now. It's kind of relaxing, actually, sitting this far back from a microphone. I will continue. Uh, please, uh, Julie, Fasci, and anybody else that would like to, Participate. Uh, let us know if the if the sound quality is breaking up. That's I'm much try better, make... Chris. Ah, oh gosh, Jeez, I can barely hear myself. Functional control is absolutely. It is it is absolutely necessary and absolutely uh, a huge aspect of the Kundalini awakening. As I mentioned earlier, if the chop didn't break it up, it's you know, we we are raised to to um, to live by our ego. We're raised to scrabble for that food and to scrabble for attention and for love and for um, you know pleasure. The ego is really about uh, the pursuit of pleasure and and the pursuit of uh, other areas. Uh, you know, even of narcissism, the ego's, you know, the ego's all about that. And I'm going to really, really, really strongly suggest that those of you within the Kundalini, even just the activated portion of it, need to really begin to understand the levels of ego involvement that a person goes through. And let's, let's not, let's not quibble about this. This ego is part of who you are. And I know that the the the, the Vedas and the uh, the Rishis that wrote this, or at least the Rig Veda, uh, the interpretations that flowed from their writings that exist in, in in contemporary Indian society is all about destroying the ego, annihilating the ego, kill the ego. And of course, I'm saying no, 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 no. Just as you wouldn't cut off your nose to spite your face, you don't get rid of your ego. You just retrain it. In the Huna philosophy, the ego is as much a part of our equation as, as any other part. Unihipili is what the ego is called in Huna. Ohane is the middle self and uh, Amakua is the higher self. This will not jive, however, with contemporary Huna practices in, in Hawaii, but it is, uh, it, it, there, there is a level of, of ancient uh, oral history and tradition that, that, that goes back thousands of years, um, you know, even before the, uh, the, the Huna was established in Hawaii. And it does fit a Kundalini model. I hope people can hear me. I feel like I'm really quiet. Anyway, so as we look to retrain the ego, it must be something that is done all the time. You don't just 
get to do a few practices and the five Tibetans want to work or whatever and go, okay, everything's good. No, no, no. You've had the ego in control of you for however many years you've been alive before your kundalini came up. So, so you know, we're talking decades and decades for some of us. Most of us, if not, well, not, but most of us, the, the great majority of us, have been by our ego's wants and desires for decades and decades, many, many, many years. And for you to think that you can just go out one day and go, okay, I forgave my Aunt Joni for being mean to my mom. All right, I've, I've done my, my ego practice. <laughs> no. <laughs> it has to be done every day, every single day. And forgiveness is the most important one to do. But then right next to forgiveness is that self-correction that needs to be done every single day and i will i will go so far as to say 24 hours a day these practices need to be constantly rolling within constantly self-correction do you lash out at people because you're angry at them do you say things that you don't mean just for the effect what are you doing for control with the ego you know, for those of you who are going into positions of power and authority, how can you expect to have a high quality of, of authority over other people's lives if you yourself haven't been emotional controls with your ego? How can you expect to have Kundalini awakened within you and have the, the power that comes with that and not work on your ego controls, your emotion controls. How are you responding? Now, if you don't do kundalini uh, emotional controls, then basically kundalini will be your, your antagonistic ego-based uh, energy. You'll let people so badly. You'll destroy friendships. You'll destroy relationships. You'll destroy... Boy, uh, the position that you have in life amongst other people simply because you have no way of modulating the, the amount of energy that's flowing through the ego. And I constantly tell my private students, um, you must, you must initiate ego control on yourself. I don't even want to work with you if you're not going to be doing ego controls. And that's that's sincere. That is absolutely the way it is. If you, if you're not able to initiate some form of e- ego-based emotional controls, then the kundalini will flow through you and she will teach you the harsh lessons. You'll have friends, you'll alienate your family. You won't attain high uh office. You won't attain the job that you want to get. You won't become that which you can become simply because your ego body and your emotional body is block it. You must self-correct your way through this. You must force yourself not to respond in the ways that you've been responding for 10, 20, 30, you know, years. And I know it's a tall order. It's a high, tall order than I'm that I am suggesting for you. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy. But I am saying that for you to to establish a strong and evolutionary-based kundalini awakening process, you're going to need to establish emotional controls. You don't get to lash out at the teacher, no matter what. You know, that just makes me feel sorry for you, number one, and it, you know, I can recognize that you're not doing your emotional work, number two. And, uh, you know, the ego in you will find every way possible for it not to be blamed, for it not to respond, to work on. Every excuse in the book will be given. Every reason. Every, and it'll back it up with not with logic and, you know, oh, you did this. And, oh, I feel the energy in you. And, uh, no. No, no, no. 
You don't get to do that with the teacher or with anybody. You don't even get to do it that way with yourself. You need to change. Now, I'll admit, and I'm a fairly challenging teacher. I don't, you know, you may hear me every week, you know, on, on this program. Uh, and you may think, oh gosh, you know, he's not as bad as he's. I am horrible. I'm a horrible, horrible. Now, you know, um, the students that I have would say, oh no, no, you're not so bad, and and. Uh, I I have to be challenging. I have to be. It is part of what comes through me to be for people. And a lot of it has to do with the emotional control. You must understand how absolutely important this is because it will block you. It will block you and it will keep you in this this purgatory of of emotional uh, excitation and emotional expression and emotional abuse in some cases, and this is not a good place to be. This can really twist your awakening until you're able to to find your way through it, if you are able to find your way through it. Practice tolerance. Practice the forgiveness. The forgiveness of yourself as well. Be tolerant of other people. Be tolerant of situations that don't meet the needs of your ego. Your ego is not going to die. Your ego is not going to just disappear. Oh, I have to leave. No, it's not true at all. Not true at all. You really, really want to begin to bring yourself into an understanding that puts time and action inside of a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week cycle of ego control, emotional control. No longer are you, you know, you shouldn't be whining about things. You shouldn't be so defensive that nobody can fit a word in edgewise. You need to be able to listen, listen, with the truth of your heart, with the truth of Kundalini in you. Listen to how you are. Don't just bubble off at the mouth. You need to listen to how you are responding to others, especially those that you perceive as being antagonistic to you. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, somebody cuts you off in traffic or whatever, you know, you know, does something that you don't like, that you can't have an expression of anger, that's okay, but don't let it last long. And pretty soon, you won't have that expression of anger. You really want this seriously, my friends. That your life is sculpted. It's being sculpted by the emotional body, which it, in, in typical uh, contemporary terms is being hijacked by the Kundalini, or, well, partly by the Kundalini, but by the ego. The ego hasn't been trained hard enough by by most of us, so it doesn't begin to take over when the Kundalini starts shooting through it. And a lot of people, um, you know, you know, I've read some. Some uh, people who who are seen as teachers by others that uh, oh you know when when you if you're a real egotistical person well when when the kundalini comes to you if you were an asshole before well you're just you're you're an enormous asshole now and I can't disagree with them if the ego is not being modulated if the ego and the emotional bodies are not being worked on you need to listen to how you are. Don't just respond to people without listening to your own emotions first. Don't feel that you have the authority and the right to blast people because they've done something wrong to you, or at least you perceive them as doing something wrong to you. You don't have that authority within the Kundalini. Kundalini is your ultimate authority. 
and the Kundalini is telling you, control the emotional body. The, the emotional body is one of the five koshas uh, that surround the human being. And you must, you must explore this kosha, this, this body of expression, really need to bring it into fruition. Um, a lot of us are defensive. A lot of us are defensive about how we are and who we are and what we are. And I'm going to say, go back to zero. You're nothing. And how you are is nothing. And what you are is unimportant. You have nothing to defend. Nothing from nothing is nothing. Go back to those beautiful, blissful zero points and begin to initiate a new status, a new stage in your expression of kundalini activation and awakening. Is this being heard, anyone? Am I just talking to myself here? <laughs> it's it's excellent, Crescent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Santara. Okay, so it's so strange for me sitting away back. I have a I have a reading from the Radius Sutra that I'd like to do right now. Uh, I'm gonna give it to you. Here it is. Meditate on the self as being vast as the sky, a body of energy extending from in all directions, above, below, all around, in the embrace of infinite space awakened to your form, divine energy, healing himself and herself as you. This is all about Kundalini. This is from the Radiant Sutras, uh, Radiant Sutra number 167. And I would like to thank Josephine Smith for this beautiful gift that we all get to share. In. It's easy for people to simply sit back and go, oh, I'm emotional controlled. Oh, yes, oh, yes, I'm, I'm very good. I don't respond to anything emotionally. I'm, I'm very controlled and I'm very uh, aware of how I am with my emotions and other people. And some people are actually like that. And they don't even have kundalini. You, you know, some therapists are like that or some MDs are like this. With the MDs, you know, they're so... Well, very few MDs are like that, actually. <laughs> but some are. The ones that I have met that I like, you know, they're they're very... They choose a loving format as opposed to an antagonistic format. I think that is very beautiful, very wonderful of them to do that. So uh, not everybody uh, is consumed by the level of ego... Uh, uh, Expression as, as everybody else, all different stages of growth, even within the Kundalini awakening. You know, uh, you know, we have different blockages in different areas of the, of the energetic anatomy. But one of the most important bodies to work on, the two bodies to work on, is the psychological body, which is the ego, and the emotional body, which are your feelings. These two bodies form a very uh, powerful and strong basis for our ability to express ourselves to each other, our environment, and to our God, and to our goddess, and to ourself as we self-talk our way through our day. Think about it. Listen to yourself. What are you thinking right now? What is your self-talk telling you, that inner dialogue? That you're having. What is that? What is saying? And if you have entities and you have Kundalini, you have entities, you know, well, forget about what the entities are saying. They are always, always, always going to be a uh, a source of dislocation for you. You know, uh, your consciousness in a way. So don't worry about entities. Just ignore them. But do be concerned with yourself and what your inner dialogue is telling you. And I, I mentioned the entities because sometimes they try to interject themselves into your inner dialogue. So for those of you that are experienced with entities, you know what I'm talking about. 
for those of you who don't know, just as well. You don't need to know, at least not at this time anyway. So pay attention to what it is you're seeing yourself throughout the day. How are you relating to your to the manager that may you know control your work? How are you thinking about your coworker? How are you thinking about your spouse, about your kids, about strangers that you see on the street? What kind of judgments are you making about other people? What kind of opinions are you forming about other people? What kind of opinions are you forming about yourself? You don't perform, you know, you know, up to the qualities of performance that your job requires or your spouse of you? What's your inner dialogue saying to you about anything, about everything throughout your day? Very important for you to pay attention to what you're saying to yourself because it's going to relate directly to what you say to other people and what you say to other people and what you say to yourself is related directly to the level of emotional body blockage or non-blockage that that the kundalini in in your energetic anatomy is going to experience. This takes us right into the understandings of grudges and judgments that your ego will turn into fact about another person. So you hear on the news, oh, the homeless person did this, or oh, the homeless person did that. And you hear this over and over and over, and pretty soon your ego starts to go, oh, yeah, homeless people are like that. They're all that way. Yes, they're all that way, and we should be very, very wary of them because they're all that way. And this is not true. Homeless person can be Jesus in disguise, as as Magdalene and I experienced just the other week. Jesus doesn't come to people in bright, brilliant streamers of light with a huge, brilliant, lit-up halo around him going, Yes, here I am. Your God has appeared before you. No, no. Jesus comes to people as a homeless person. Standing on a corner near Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. And a lot of people have a hard time going into the divine with this thing. They have a, and I purposefully did not give my understanding what had what had occurred, and be, uh, you know, except to say it was divinity. And it wasn't, he didn't, he wasn't there for me. He was there for the person that I was with. Same as, as, as you know, I mean, Jesus has appeared more than once. Now, look at yourself, talk. Listen to yourself. You're going, you know, wow, gosh, that Christian, you know, he's always way out there. You know, God mentioned Jesus for crying out loud. He must be one of those holy rollers. Or he must be, you know, some sort of a guy. I mean, who's going to say in public that they saw Jesus? My word, God, get that guy some Klonopin. Get him some Prozac. My God, think about it. So, so, you know, Pay attention to what your self talk is and, and, and you know it's all negative. The self talk isn't always negative. You can go, Oh God, what a beautiful woman. What oh God, what a beautiful flower. I'm so happy to have met you. I'm so happy to 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 see you succeed. I'm so I mean, the very positive aspects and I will certainly ask you to to focus on those positivities, although not at the exclusion of all negativities. What I'm asking you to do is remove your ego judgment. Remove the little child inside you, behind your eyes, uh, who responds in fear, responds in judgment, who responds defensively, who, who is really there to protect and position. Did you hear that? Let me say it again. Who is there to protect status and power and position? always wants to be in control of how you are. And for those of you who are inside of a Kundalini Awakening Equation, that can no longer be the case. And if you're not looking at this 24-7, then you're not paying attention. You know, they're part of the safeties for a reason. 
they weren't just put there because, you know, I needed to fill in some space on the page. How we think and what our personal, you know, inside emotion, emotional environment is, is extremely important with how we're going to receive the rest of the Kundalini evolution upon us. You are not less than anybody else because you don't have money. Look at me. I got, you know, you listen to <laughs> to Amelia or Eileen or any of the other blessed students that I have, and they know they know that I don't have any money. Uh, they know that I have very little, but I don't care. You know, I'm not insisting on, you know, money does not make the... And I just want to say as an addendum to that, it's like you guys don't need to donate anything if you, if you can't do it. It's only for those that want to do it, not insisting on anything. You know, I will I will do these teams until I pass. And I don't care if I'm just standing on the corner looking like a homeless person. I'll even put a few whiskey bottles at my feet just to complete the picture. And I'll just give Kundalini advice and, you know, hopefully they won't lock me up. So practice your emotional controls. Now I want to I want to bring uh, Holy on Amelia. Are you still there? Are you in the hour? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm here. I'm here, cousin. It just takes a moment to go in the red for my muse to come off. <laughs> the sound is yep. pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, Sometimes it wobbles, but it's pretty good. Well, you got to love it. I mean, Spashti's right. I mean... <sighs> I'll just, you know, we're just going to have to move with this because I have, have a strong level of kundalini and it does interfere with cars and electronic items and my little internet box that that uh, that another friend is giving me and this and some aspects of the iPad. All that I must, I have to compliment Apple Company for creating something that isn't as prone to disruption from my kundalini as others are. Um, and, and, and in this, uh, uh, Emilia, I would like you to comment on this, on, on how you listen to your self-dialogue and, and what is happening to you as you hear these words from me. Okay, Cousin. Well, first of all, as I hear those words from you, um, the Kundalini, it's the truth. I know that through the Kundalini in me. It resonates completely with me. And also, you know, the safety that those, when I first came, when, when I had my Kundalini awakening event, you know, for a very short period of time, um, I had the most amazing experience I was given to know, I think, <laughs> this is not ego, I was given to know for a little while what it was like to have no ego. But then, bam, I'm back again and I need to, my ego is big. And I have a very strong ego. And um, the thing that has been wonderful for me on this journey since I met with you and, and the Kundalini Awakening Sacredies Protocols is how they have become the cornerstone of, of my life, really, and how they have helped me so much in my emotional controls. Um, and they are something that I practice 24-7. I didn't start off that way. I would have begun with doing the forgiveness and I would have started with that and I would have begun, you know, doing the recapitulation and working on that. And as I committed to that, um, what began to happen was a process that the Kundalini came to me with. Things began to rise that needed more forgiveness, that I needed to go deeper into. And um, my emotional response to some of the things that I was working on with giving my forgiveness to um, became quite amplified and this transferred, you know, across different elements of my life, such as my family of origin and that sort of thing. And so 
it began to expand. And so my forgiveness began to expand. And then I began to bring, like tolerance came into play then. I became aware, oh, one of the safeties is tolerance because I would find myself becoming very intolerant. And, um, but, you know, my ego would let me know how justified that intolerance was. <laughs> <laughs> and so the teaching from you and from the safeties would suggest that I needed to practice my tolerance. And so I consciously, or I suppose I, I, I did, yeah, consciously begin to do this. I and just, of course, I, once, just see, I can just see John's head going, yep, that's right, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he's listening to all this, but he's not here with me. I might call him down. <laughs> But, uh, or maybe not, maybe not. Hi, John. <laughs> but um, what I found was, you know, when the tolerance was something that was um, being, when I needed to work on that, it expanded. It was for a little while as if, you know, tolerance was the thing that I was working on and working on and working on and, and, and bringing into my day. And then that would fade and something else would come up. For example, you know, I might need, you know, the inner joy with something and honesty with something. And little by little, all of these things began to, all of these practices um, began to expand in my life and, you know, helped me to retrain the ego, really, because, I mean, it took me even a while to understand, and I probably still don't fully, but where I am now, I understand better at least, you know, how the ego has controlled me uh, for decades and decades. And um, even though I had done a lot of work on myself before my Kundalini awakened, and I had done some forgiveness, and I was, you know, a kind person and all those kind of things, that really is a separate issue to how my kundalini likes to be in charge. Or not my kundalini, my, well, yes, but my ego, how my ego likes to be in control. Um, and so, really, the space of these, I mean, I talk about them all the time because they have, they have been the thing that has... Um, brought balance into my life. I mean, Kundalini amplifies everything, everything. And sometimes, you know, I needed those things as an anchor and as a compass. And they are just incredible tools. I don't like using that word, but it's the only one I can think of. They are incredible tools and helpful um, protocols to use. And then using all of those, that can be done without a teacher even. But by having you as my teacher, well, <laughs> that, because, you know, um, even working with the safeties, um, the ego still can fool you. Uh, but your teacher, or my experience has been that my teacher doesn't. And is well, honest. Well, let's, and let's look at that. Let's look at that now. Am I not sometimes antagonistic with you? And what what is the purpose of that? Well, yes, you are. And the purpose of that, I think, um, um, in my experience has been that the purpose of that triggers emotional responses in me sometimes, triggers a kundalini or an Mm -hmm. ego response. Mm -hmm. And it's like a test, (laughs) you know, at which I fail constantly. You don't fail. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's always. It is always going to be a test. It is. Yeah, but you yeah. don't fail constantly. I won't. I won't accept that. No, well, you do. You do. So people need. In to the know. failure, though, I mean, even that word isn't like in the test. Um, there is amazing learning in that. When you, because I, because now. I understand the process much better than I used to do. And so, therefore, you know, I do not respond in ego ways to your, your um, you know, 
I'm not. Yeah. I don't you, you, respond as I once did, and I'm on this learning thing with regard to my ego. And um, that is wonderful. That there's no way I I would be doing on my own. I feel I know. There's no doubt about that. I know that is a fact. So the the safeties and the input and the instruction and the feedback and you know the antagonistic whatever. Um, but just your your um, dedication to me, actually, as as my teacher, um, has really been amazing in how my um, emotional controls are developing and how my ego doesn't have the same grip upon me as it once did. So I know that I am moving in in the correct way, in the, in in a better direction. And I know that as well from from how my Kundalini communicates with me um, throughout my day and as the years have been passing, you know. So yeah. That's my response. <laughs> Good response. And and I must say that with almost all of the people that I work with within Kundalini except those who are in the you know the, uh, the total beginning of it, uh, the emotional controls are 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 initiated into this. I may not be so challenging for everybody, but you know, I my Kundalini modulates those teachings. I am I am given when to be challenging and and how much energy to put into that challenge and what form of challenge it's going to take and and uh, you know. You know, constantly looking at ways of sharpening a person's skills at at uh, controlling their ego and controlling their emotional response. As you mentioned, tolerance is really, really it's a huge subject, and it's just, it's it, with tolerance there are levels of of uh, discernment that must be made. Okay, must I tolerate this, and why? Okay, mm-hmm. am I is is it my ego? That, oh, I've had enough of this, or is it something else in me that's saying, "Hey, you know, you're not a doormat. Don't let people walk you that way." You see, there are levels of discernment within within tolerance that isn't so present within forgiveness. With forgiveness, I just want you to go there. Now, forgiveness is the strongest form because if you're truly forgiving, then nothing ever bothers you. Mm-hmm. Nothing ever bothers you because you've forgiven it all, okay? But that's not the case for most of us. You know, for most of us, you know, constantly inside of levels of of emotional attack. We are attacked by our bosses. We are attacked by our teachers. Sometimes we're attacked by society. We're attacked by the police. We're attacked, you know, by our family, our friends, perfect strangers. And... It is there that we need to look into our level of tolerance and how we how we respond expressively to those challenges. And tolerance tolerance is a strengthening gift. The more tolerant you are, the stronger you are. The stronger you are, the more you're able to face adversity. That makes sense to anyone? The more you're able to face adversity, greater levels of interaction that you can you can participate in uh, as a as a as a soul an old body that's having kundalini, and kundalini will give you some adversity. It's really not all about happy happy joy. It is about that, the time, but not always because it will realize that oh. Chris and his emotional practice. Well, then, the next experience that I'm arranging for him is not going to be happy, happy, joy, joy. It's going to be an experience that is going to help him learn how to modulate, to pay attention to his inner dialogue and his emotional and egotistic control. Lenny will see that it's just. Kundalini can be exceptionally harsh in its teachings for a person. It doesn't mess around at all. Uh, sometimes it is very, very helpful to have a flesh teacher in place so that the the experience can be communicated from uh, 
flesh consciousness to flesh consciousness, and it comes through much cleaner. You have an you have a way of understanding. I just, you know, helping a person just uh, yesterday. I just had to lean up to him, and and uh, you know he's having a very very difficult time first with this, and, and firmly the Kundalini is given into him, allow him to establish his egotistical controls. Part of ego control is fear. Mm. How are you going to deal with fear? Fear is one of the most primal of our, our emotions of our experience, and and it helps us to find, you know, do we pick up that big spider with the red violin on our foot? Probably best not to do that. You know, and in our genetic history will tell us, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that particular Christian? Or that particular type of... Christian? Hello. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, I okay. And um, may yeah, you are, but maybe you could um lower the volume for the TV It sounds like you've moved right up to the mic. <laughs> um, I might and it's, All right. Okay, Next so I, I think it's got to do with the 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 the, the Yeah. The tone at the height of your volume, you know. Anyway, so maybe that lovely meditation sound again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. It's better. Hello. Hello. I wonder if they have an adjusting thing on this iPad or not. I don't know. Can you hear me now? Is this all right? That's perfect. <laughs> so, so, uh, so fear. Fear is is one of the biggest. To our enlightenment equation, uh, that is there. Fear is one of the most difficult things to overcome, and it is also one of the most powerful holds that the ego has over us. So it's important to look at fear control, and if you're looking at fear control, then looking at ego control as well. And I, for those of you who who are hearing this broadcast, you know, nothing has changed for me, but all of a sudden, you know, I have to speak like in these flippers. I'll be looking for a control thing on this after the program. So how do you control your fear? What have you done in your life to control your fear? What fears have you faced and why did you face it? And what happened? What was the result of you facing that fear? It's important for you to to um, to explore these areas. Go back into your past and look at how you have modulated, how you have worked with your fear, and realize that not only did you did you work on that fear, but you were also working on the ego and its control over how you are. You know, your your higher functioning mental body is not powerless. It's the one that's really making these choices right now. And it's the one that is being infused with the kundalini at the same time that the ego is being you know, it's not just it's not just uh, you know, the ego or the kundalini. So there's you there too. There's your higher mental functioning terms. I use the Huna terms simply because they have a it's very Kundalini-esque type of belief system. And, you know, it's not a belief system that I'm suggesting you partake of necessarily, but it is it does help with a certain levels of explanation within a Kundalini teaching. Um, look at this level of fear that you have. Look at how you respond to others emotionally and find the fear within that response. Find the fear in how you relate to your social environment and how you relate to yourself inside. So, as some of you may know, I posted it yesterday. I was walking across a parking lot yesterday and and, uh, yesterday evening, not even 
you know, 24 hours ago. And uh, about, uh, you know, 20 feet from a sidewalk on the other side of the parking lot, I saw this young man running with a gun that he, it looked like he could barely hold it in his hand. It was a 38 uh, police 38 special. I didn't, I didn't uh, recognize it as a cop's gun at the time. I just noticed it was a pistol. I was ready to tackle him. My kundalini stopped me, and, and uh, I felt the radiance spread in the situation. And then all of a sudden, you know, nine, nine undercover police tackle the guy that the limp-wristed guy was uh, was chasing. And, uh, oh, and I said, uh, I realized then that, oh, okay, all right. But I didn't feel fear of, in the situation. I feel more fear when I'm working on my car. <laughs> but in those two situations, I didn't feel fear at that at all. And, you know, they tackled him. And the, as they were going to start brutalizing the man, tasering him or kicking him in the head and whatnot, like the cops like to do out here in the States, the captain looked at me and then he just calmed everybody down immediately. And I just continued on my walk of fear. In a situation where most people would feel fear. You know, that close to all these loaded guns. I found out they had snipers behind the other cars I was walking past that I just blithely did not notice. Uh, I recognized some of the snipers because I'd seen them earlier. Uh, like two years ago at a Taco Bell. And I recognized uh, one guy had a beard, and he was there. And uh, they all work for the Justice Department, which is kind of odd, the, the whole idea of justice. I guess it would be bullet, bullet justice. But I wasn't afraid. And I would invite you to similar levels of being afraid within yourself and within the smallest things that may happen to you. Something goes bump in the night. If you're there alone, don't freeze up with fear. Have trust in your kundalini. Trust in the process that's happening for you. And as you as you continue in the kundalini, you're, you're going to be given these challenges, as I mentioned before. And some of these challenges are going to be there directly to scare you, to bring you into a, a an equation of controlling your fear. That it's another form of ego control because it's the ego that fears. Your mental self doesn't fear. Your spiritual self certainly doesn't fear. But your ego will fear. And your emotional self will bond to those fears. And those fears will begin to control how you feel about certain situations. So it's very important for you to look at your self-dialogue, your inner dialogue, and look at the other areas where you're fearing. So not only are you looking um, at your ego and how much your ego is present in your inner dialogue, I also want you to look at your fear, a, a product of your ego dialogue. And just to repeat, your inner dialogue are the words you say to yourself all day long. That's your inner dialogue. So look at that. If there's anybody that would like to call and, and uh, join our conversation, the phone number is 347-934-0026. Yes, Amelia. Sashji has made the suggestion here. He says, I don't know if this makes sense, but if Chrism is holding the iPad, maybe if he can wedge it on the dashboard, it may cut down on his energetic interference. <laughs> well, <laughs> Bashi, you're right on the money there. You're right on the money. I am not holding the iPad. I am The iPad is indeed on the dash of the car, and I am about five feet away from it now, talking barely audibly to myself. But maybe it's just my bad hearing. It's Maybe actually it's very good, Chrism. Seriously, the, the sound and um, volume is good, 
and the interference um, has certainly got better from my perspective here since you dropped the, the tone a little bit. So, oh, yeah, is that a strain? I'm, here I am, I'm sweating in the car. I, I don't want to roll the windows down for all the, the, uh, the noise in the neighborhood here. And I'm just like going, oh, my word. Okay. I'm talking I'm talking very softly. Maybe it's a good thing. This is not my normal volume, but maybe I need to explore these softer volumes as well. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Amelia Santana. So, yeah. Look at the levels of fear that are controlling you. Look at the levels of fear that are controlling your emotional response. And this, this, this leads into emotional defense mechanisms as well. Fear is a component of your emotional defense mechanism. So you will feel fear if you feel that your personality is being slighted. And, you know, that affects your, 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 your placement in society, your power and your placement. And, and um, you know, like sharks in the water, if they smell blood, you know, people will attack. And and uh, this is often the case. And so the ego knows this, and so it initiates uh, a fear response if anybody is impugning the character or the uh, the activities that a person is having. That person's ego will jump in, initiate fear into the process, and the fear in the process initiates a defense mechanism that, oh, no, 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 you don't. You are not going to treat me that way, or you're not going to say this or this or that. And, you know, so the the fear begins to fuel a defense response, and that defense response can come out quite sharply and quite hurtfully. And and, uh, and if you're not astute enough or discerning enough to, to determine the level of emotional content from the other person's uh, words to you, then a very hurtful uh, interaction can occur. And and especially with a Kundalini person, because with Kundalini, the radiance, the radiance will cut deep into another. This is one of the most important things, really, that we've ever talked about here on this program. It's emotional control. If you don't have the ability to control how you think and what you feel, then you are peppering the rest of society with those, those bullets of anxiety, those bullets of fear, those bullets of, of anger or grudge or resentment or fear, your radiance carries that quite along with it. It's not a problem. Radiance is radiance. Radiance is like a, a carrier wave of many different levels of intent. And if you're not controlling, if you're not taking responsibility for your inner dialogue and for your inner thoughts and your emotions and your feelings, then those qualities are also being carried into the radiance which are affecting the people around you, which is why your healing skills will have a very negligible value. In other words, you don't get to be a real hateful person and then go out and call yourself a healer. Because you're not. If anything, you're a, you're a disease, a walking, talking, emitting disease because of what it is you're putting into the environment. I know that was a strong word, but it is. It, it, it is a fact. As soon as you start taking control of your emotional body, as soon as you start taking control of your ego, then you become a grace. And yes, then the healing skills and the healing under, the healing uh, positions will open themselves up for you. But you must do it more than once. None of none of what I'm talking about is a one-time deal. It's a constant reinforcement of of constant levels of Kundalini-based discernment over how the ego is affecting you and how. Uh, your emotional body is affecting you, and what you need to do to form a greater level of a, of Kundalini awakening equation within yourself, and and that greater level has to do directly with emotional control and ego control. And I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm shouting now, but <laughs> it's it's a truth. It's a truth. It, it must occur. It must occur. And I will suggest that it needs to occur. Really. 
A lot of you may be having some difficult dreams at night. And many of those dreams are going to be about your levels of interaction of uh, fear and uh, power and position and, and uh, you know, fear of losing this or fear of gaining that. Uh, um, all of your wants and all of your desires are backed up by fear of not having them. Want of gain and fear of loss. So, you want to get them, and you're afraid if you don't have them. And then when you have them, it's going to be in a equation. If you're selling a, uh, a car or a boat or a, you know, this, you know, some some possession of yours, I want you to take the fear of not selling it out of the equation. You're trying to get to a concert. Or, um, or a, you know, a, a talk somebody's giving or a seminar or whatever, and you don't have enough money, I want you to take fear out of the equation because it's just, it's just so, the idea that you don't have enough, which is just another fear. You get rid of that fear, the levels of abundance, and you get rid of that and you're not afraid to lose that abundance. If that it needs to go to fear, take the fear out of the Take the ego out of the equation. Let the kundalini fill in the spaces. I'm sorry if I'm shouting. But let the ego go. Ego needs to go. Or at least to be retrained. It needs to go away in its present state, and it needs to be replaced by a kundalini-trained ego. You let the kundalini begin to form your, your decisions and form your thoughts and form your conclusions. It's not easy at first to discern uh, your normal thinking self uh, from... I understand that as well, but it takes practice, and the more you practice things... The and you need to do that. You start on the small things. You know, how I relate to my spouse, how I relate to my to my teacher, how I relate to my friend, family, how I relate to my dog, my cat. And I really, you may think that I'm, I'm joking with that, but not. Because in, in our society, at least in the States here, you know, it's the dogs and the cats that will take the most brutal, brutal, Emotional-based abuse, or the kids, the dog, you know, kick cat. You know, whenever we can't express some heated emotional issue with another, who do you think is going to be the recipient of that anger? It's going to be the dog or the cat or the any other pet that has to be around that you feel you can disrespect. Don't disrespect them. The animals are back to love, and if we really look at it with, with true hearts and true discernment, they are teaching us how to be. They are teaching us to remember how natural we can be and still be happy without money, still be happy without a 1963 blue Ford F100, still be happy without clothing, still be happy by being loving Creatures, creatures of love. So those animals have a very pure, pure level of communication that they're not using as... They teach us how to remember what we can be. Like dolphins are the same way. So realize that, that, that you also... You're not. You're not really. I hate to use the word allowed, but it's not advisable for you to to take out your emotional tantrum on an animal. Yeah, very, very important. Very important. And you, and you, you don't get to to just use them either. They need to be taken care of. They need to be given the love that they give, if not more. 
You need to be as responsible for the animals as you are for your own children. So if you have a if you have a comment that you'd like to make, and I'm gonna my iPad kind of pushes me out here every after a certain amount of time. Okay, I'm getting closer to the iPad, so I'm gonna have to talk really loud, slow, slow, uh, uh, quietly here. If you have a comment and you'd like to join in the conversation, feel free to call three four seven three four zero zero two six and uh, join in the conversation. I'd like to bring uh, Holiness Eileen on board. Hello, Eileen. Hi, Craven. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm having a hard time hearing you. You are, every once in a while, you're very clear, and, and the rest of it is garbled, so I'm straining to catch the words. So Are you serious? I'm getting the, I'm getting the gist of it. Well, then. But I'm on the phone. Apparently, other people aren't having this issue as much. Well, I'll try to bring it up at least. Now, how's this right there? Yeah, that's that's really good. That's, that's very good. Really good. And of <laughs> course, the people the people on the computers are covering their ears now. Um, <laughs> so, so tell me, what has your experience been with with uh, the ego and emotional control? Oh, jeez. <laughs> no, come on now. <laughs> Yeah, well, come on now. <laughs> it's not that uh, it's bad. Been very, I'm, it's been very, uh, it's been difficult. I feel I'm in a much better place now. What I find, I now, things happen, and I can get very upset and very angry, and then it doesn't last very long. And and within a short uh-huh. period of time, I'm looking at it and going. Well, that was interesting, <laughs> and I, you know, I can actually smile about it, or um, and I'm let, letting things. I know you don't see, you don't let things bother you. I have an issue now that I I sleep on a blow up mattress. Well, it's losing air, and I'm thinking, <laughs> okay, um, this means that if I if this goes and I can't fix Are it. You- are you jumping on the mattress, Eileen? No, <laughs> no, but um, but anyway, it's I it didn't it happened yesterday or it's two well two nights now, but you know, Chris, it doesn't bother me. I keep thinking, right. well, you know, I may I may end up on the floor, but that's it's, that's it's just, it doesn't that's matter too. You know, <laughs> sleeping on the floor. Sleeping on the floor is very healthy. Well, I mean, granted, you, you you may want to put a sheet down, something like that, but sleeping on the floor on a hard surface can be, uh, shall I say, a soft hard surface, uh, can be very, very helpful for the... And maybe that's... Yeah, well, you're fading a little bit, but... Uh, maybe that's but the no, instruction that's you're so- being given, I mean. Oh, you're right. <laughs> But I, I want to tell you what I, I did. I, I called the company first, and of course they said, "Well, you know, you, ha- you have to do it yourself or try to fix it or whatever." And she told me how to do it. And then I thought, you know, I called my mechanic because they work with tires. And believe it or not, he told me to bring it in, and they will check it for me. And I'm thinking, this is really nice, and it just. It just makes me feel good that, you know, I don't know how many people would think to call their mechanic when they have a mattress that's not holding air. But um, so anyway, I'm pursuing that, and if it doesn't work, well, then. And the fact that you you didn't get angry at it gave you enough, I think, uh, energy and, and impetus to, yeah, to go outside of the box and, and, and find a solution to that situation. So I compliment you, compliment you on that. I know that, you know, there's, what about your levels of fear? How are those coming? Oh, well, I don't, I was, I was thinking as you were talking about interactions with people, I don't feel, I don't think I feel, or I'm not aware of fear, 
I get more angry or uh, irritated, irritated more than anything. Um, but then, just, then I just try to. That's all right. I just try to separate myself from it and 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 walk away and say, well, this is just the way it is. Um, I do feel fear. Un- you could change un- that. It does not have to be the way it is. You can actually, you know, initiate a, a form of of resolution. Maybe it's this way right now, but this can change. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Or you know, you can also kick in the whole tolerance thing too, and. And use tolerance as a way to just kind of give yourself a break and uh, go, okay, we'll see how long this lasts and what I can do to resolve it, you know, in the meantime. Right. right. I want everybody to know. I want everybody to know that Lasha has joined the conversation. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> she says hello. Well, she doesn't want to be left out. No, she doesn't. And so she is not left out. She's in the conversation. And uh, she's modulating. <laughs> <laughs> she's one. She has really good emotional control. Lasha does. She uh, could teach us all a, a thing or two about emotional control. <laughs> anyway, well, thank you, I Thank you for that. And I'm going to put you in the, the Shiva Blue. Thank you. So there you have it. Eileen, I think, gave us a pretty good example about, you know, a gentle example really about fear. And and you're going to hear some because I have the door open. Uh, about a, a gentle fear and, you know, like a look in your mattress. I mean, imagine if it was a waterbed. You know, it wouldn't be so easy to just dismiss. But hers is an air mattress. And so, of course, she's going to take it to, to people who plug the holes in rubber items. Of course, that's going to be the case. And so, uh, I tip my hat to Eileen for her lack of being bothered by it, uh, being creative to reach outside uh, the normal routine of, of what a person would do and, and uh, calling a gas station or a tire repair shop to fix a, a mattress. I think that's great. I think that's the way to do it. You'll hear some bells because Lash is here. And, hey, hey, get that on my seat. He's testing my emotional control there. <laughs> she scratches the heck out of my back seat. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Eileen gave us a great example. And, uh, and uh, so many of my fears in my early uh, equation were difficult fears. And for me especially, I, mean, I was dealing with kundalini phenomena that was just amazing, you know, telekinetic and having having <laughs> having uh nature spirits come that were don't think nature spirits are like little elves they're not they're exceptionally powerful emanations of shakti that literally can can shake the trees towards your direction it's just it's it's it can be ex- exceptionally feeling. and uh, I was dealing with that and a lot of these types of things and but once again as you trust your kundalini as you trust your kundalini and you don't allow the ego to to push more survival based fear into your system you trust the kundalini you give to the kundalini that trust and that trust forms a strength within you. And as you have that strength and as you practice that trust, that strength, stronger and stronger, there will be very little that you have left to fear. Very little that you have left to fear. I want you to understand that. And I want you to practice that. Yes, yes, Your Holiness. Okay, Chris, and there's a question here from Suka or a comment. She says, the last, or Suka says, the last two weeks, my emotional body makes me shaking and trembling a lot. It feels like a period of cleaning up, but it makes me very tired. 
So she's having kriyas. She's having little shaking kriyas. And and uh, you'll have emotional kriyas attached to physical kriyas often. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and the kundalini will begin to siphon off energy. You know, I'm looking at your equation and, and I see uh, certain levels of things that aren't being done. You need to stay hydrated. You need to keep your mineral mix strong. You need to eat foods that are healthy and non-sugar based or non-stimulant based as organic and as natural as you can get. Um, watermelon would be of great assistance to you. So taking caffeine if you're using that to to uh, to treat your, your lack of energy or your or, you know the fact that you're tired. Uh, couldn't you will and, and do the five Tibetans. Do the five Tibetans. You know, open yourself to more if you're if you're able to do that. Uh, it, it, you do want to tolerate a lot of the symptoms that the Kundalini will bring to a person. If having the shaking kriyas, uh, they are kriyas no less important and no less. Uh, uh, necessary than some of the larger, so shall we say, grand mal kriyas. <laughs> it's splice in a medical term there. Um, yeah. Pay attention to your sexuality. Are you giving, are you reaching orgasm? Are you, are you expelling energy that way in your system? Um, what are you doing? Are you exercising? Are you grounding? Are you getting into the mud? Are you into the earth? Are you sitting up next to a tree and envisioning the roots as your roots, as the as the shakti, as the as the the trunk of the tree in your spine? You know, there's a lot that is being not said about your process. Uh, so, yeah, look, are you eating a lot of vegetables? Or is it only vegetables? Are you eating some meat? Uh, sometimes we need compact protein in order to in, initiate of energy within us, and the, but if we have an, you know, this 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 program within us that says, "Oh no, no, I can't eat meat," well, then you know you're going to suffer some of the weaknesses that can be given, you know, through uh, a resistance. You know, if, and I'm not suggesting this is the case for for this person, but I'm just speaking generally to everyone. You know, you need to not resist the Kundalini at all, even if it forces you to change your your diet. You know, and Amelia can tell you a bit about that. And I think she has another programs where, you know, she was vegetarian for many, many years until the Kundalini told her she had to eat meat. And she found some fish. She ate the fish and for a, a little bit of time she liked it, right? Yeah, right, Christian. First of all, I was a meat eater and I became vegetarian. And after two years, I started then to be a vegan. And two more years, um, I was given to eat meat. And it's about doing you know, surrendering to what it is the Kundalini gave for me. And the meat was, the fish was very pleasant. So far in the last seven years, I haven't yet been given to eat any other type of flesh except fish for those two years. But who knows, when that time comes, I'm open to surrendering to that. And (laughs) yes, (laughs) correct. Yeah, I was thinking about about fears. Yeah, yeah, eggs are a fear. <laughs> no, but I had a lot of fears, Prison. You know, I mean, even falling asleep because I had horrendous dreams. That there was a fear in that. I was afraid of flying. I was afraid of lifts. I couldn't even get into a lift um, in a building. You know, I had a huge amount of fears. I. I had a fear of water because I had I used to have horrendous drowning fears and my goodness me um fear of roller coasters hang spiders on. bugs dogs hang on. <laughs> hang, hang, hang on hang on Amelia hang on hang on I just want to say one okay. thing John John my heart goes out to you. <laughs> oh I guess he's laughing. Yeah, he'll remember those times well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to list anymore now. How did you you overcome them? What were you doing to overcome them? 
Well, for some of them, um, yeah, they they all they were all resolved in different ways. But generally, um, it was trust, and um, there was trust, and there was also doing what it was I feared. A little bit like some of the fears you, you know, you initiated as well in your teachings when you would have given me to do certain things and fear would rise. Well, in the same way, you know, I, I faced those fears and I trusted and, um, yeah, they, they resolved well, gonna, in that way, you know. I'm going to mention, I'm going to mention, a, 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 and you can stay on, stay on here, unless it starts getting that echo that it sometimes does to you. One of the fear tests of everybody that I give to people is is a is my own form of chod. It's a Tibetan term. It's spelled C H O the umlau or the O and D D is in dog. Chod. And in the chod, you you are tied in a in a star position. So your arms are out wide and your legs are out wide, and you're tied to the earth. And uh, typically by trees, or if you're out in a barren space, you know, then somebody hammers in stakes, and you're tied, and you're praying, and you're 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 asking the demons to come and rip threads. I don't. That's 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 a classical chode for for my version of the chode. I just have you tied up, and I let the kundalini do what it wants. So the the kundalini will bring the levels of interaction and the levels of of uh fear to the face inside that equation. And uh and I have done this with a few students and you know it it is it is quite 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 fear evoking. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you yeah. think wouldn't you think Amelia? Yes, I would imagine <laughs> And of course, everybody knows that this has been one of the the things that I have done. And yes, I mean, yeah, when when I was given to do this, and um, the fear that arose within me because it was pitch black night, it was in a forest, um, you know, a lot of fears rose up to me. And it's exactly what happened. You know, the emotional body does bond with those fears, and oh my God. The stuff that rises up, that um, the self-talk and the inner dialogue, you know, and and the not wanting to do it and the, the lots of other reactions that I would have had. Yes, trusting and taking that step into, you know, into trust and trusting the instruction that was given for me, not understanding all about why it was, but trusting that my teacher knew you know, all the reasons for it and um, trusting my kundalini as I went out to do the chode, you know, and then having, you know, all what happened while I was there and when it finished and the amazing learning and the experience that that was had from that was incredible, really. Yeah, very useful, very useful tool. I'm talking to the floor now so that I'm not too loud for people. But yeah, yeah, and uh, and this is a this is one of those tools, and I don't suggest that anybody does it outside of have a teacher. If you don't have a teacher, don't do it. Um, I won't go into the ins and outs of it all, but I, you know, these are just different methodologies that that uh, that the Kundalini has given to use with people uh, to face their fears. I have a, some students uh, that are afraid of any. Like they're afraid of a bug, they're afraid of a mouse, you know. They're afraid of things that that creep and crawl, and and uh, and so of course, you know, the first thing I do is take them into an area where there are things that creep and crawl. Well, they creep and crawl in the woods for sure. There are so many. Oh, we have a caller, and I think it's fashion. Yeah. I'm pushing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Am I hey. on? Hey. Okay? Hey. You're... <laughs> Hi. I, you know what? I was sitting up here, and I, I called in earlier, and um, I think Eileen was on. And um, you, you went off in another direction, but you, you arrived back here at this point. And uh, <laughs> I thought that I would jump in, and I hope that I didn't cut uh, 
on Tara's shore. She's a pretty tall woman. She can she can. <laughs> <laughs> No, Fasti, indeed not. It's lovely to hear you. So I'm going in the blue now, so you you can speak away there. Oh, it's blue. I thought it was green. Okay, it's blue. All right, got it. Shakti and uh, Shiva, got it. <laughs> That's right. Go ahead, my friend. Continue. Anyway, I I have been listening to this, and I uh, it's just like it's so wonderful to hear this. Uh, I wanted to 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 point out that. Uh, the safeties are a sort of a refinement tool. And I know we don't like to use the word tool, but maybe I can say a process or something like that. A refinement process because this whole experience with the ego and it's losing control and not wanting to and sort of getting a little bit more desperate than it normally would, and it will use certain certain uh, uh, devices. But uh, the point I'm trying to make is this. I I think that this whole thing with the safeties and the refinement process is that it will continue beyond the point at which we have bodies. It's something that is going to go on as long as we exist. In other words, I'm I'm feeling that there are so many different levels of refinement in this, this process of, of, of putting the ego aside uh, or, or actually its control because it seems that, you know, as individuals we need a certain measure of it, but um, this fight never goes on. Each time we forgive someone, each time we 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 tolerate you know, an act by someone that we feel might not be in our best interest, um, those levels are going to continue to get more and more refined. And so it never stops. And so uh, the thing that, that uh, the K and me was saying is that, well, you got to go on and at least say that it never stops. It continues on and on um, as we get more and more um Refined. Well, it does. It does. It, it, and and that's, you know, there's karma right there. You know, we learn, you know, we get a, you know, when you die, you do get a review of your life. Not maybe instantaneously <laughs> and, and not, not maybe in the way that Hollywood portrays it. But we do get a review of our life. We do get to see every interaction and that we did and how the other people felt about our that part of our interaction. Right. So uh, this is a constant level of refinement that is occurring, uh, Fashi, and you're very astute to see that, to notice that. And these are indeed a platform for refinement that, uh, that the Kundalini has given for us to follow. And I really, really strongly suggest, I urge anyone inside of the Kundalini awakening process to practice the safeties, you can reach the safeties at www. all one word, Kundalini Awakening System One dot com. Look at the left side menu and about the fifth one down is our safeties. Uh, click on that, copy that, hard copy that. Put it in your put it in the bathroom, put it in your bedroom, put it in the living room, put it anywhere where you can access it and read it and and begin to express those qualities, those practices. Uh, Fashti, uh, you're doing a great job to to really uh, um, direct people. What is that noise? To direct people to the quality of karma, the qualities of... of uh, for that which we give, so shall we receive. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you, Master C. I, um, Thank you um, for bringing that up. I was just hoping that I could also point out that the more that we receive, the more responsible we have to become. Um, and yes. that's something yes. else that... Oh, no, no, no. That, that is true. Great power comes great responsibility, and Kundalini is that great power. And part of having responsibility for such a great power 
is to begin to go inside yourself and make the corrections so that your radiance doesn't carry out into the populations your imperfections or the areas exactly. of challenge that you have yet to... Oh, I'm sorry. My, my dog is active now. No, he's um. a good dog. You give him a love, <laughs> love pet. Yeah, he's spoiled. Um, thank you, Master. I, I, I just uh, I, I just wanted to share that with the group. Um, and, you know, it, 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 it mattered to me because I saw this very clearly that no matter where we think we are on the path, um, there's always the plus element involved. There's always so much more that's there. And so that oh should keep gosh, the ego... It? <laughs> yes, it does. What? <laughs> what? So, I mean, you know, a lot of people think they, they, they have the Kundalini, therefore that's it for them. There's nothing else to do. The Kundalini came to them, and so they don't have to do anything now. And right. it's just not the case. It's just not the case. I mean, the Kundalini, it drives us towards our refinement. It's yeah. a new state of living and interacting and... And uh, you know it, it's it's a whole new level of life, and the 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 amazing quality of it is, is is as you state, no matter where we are in our process, there's always room for improvement. Hmm. Yes, that's it. That's it. Okay. Um, no. Yes. I, I was just going to get out of the way here, head off into the blue. <laughs> So that if anybody else You're had anything, to... I'm sorry. You know, I've got I've got room on here for a lot of different callers. So you know, never feel like you have to jump away, unless of course you want to jump in. You know, I understand that no. too. It's not no, always hard. It's I... not always easy to be up here. Well, you know, I, I I also want to share. I also see how my situation right now has been. Uh, brought from my my highest good um, because I needed to learn a, more in this refinement process that I was talking about, Master C. I needed to to see more, and now that I've realized this, and based on this this whole um, the show, um, I'm able to look at that uh, in an honest way, and um, I, I, I'm grateful to you. Thank you very much. Well, I'm, I'm grateful for you, to, you know, for coming up with areas of interest. They're, actually, they're quite conducive to people beginning to hold and take responsibility for how they feel and how much of their ego that they control their lives. Exactly. You know, it's very, very important to, to initiate these protocols, these safety protocols, but also the protocols of, of self-discernment. And mm-hmm. how to have how to have levels of, of and I'm probably talking way too loud here. <laughs> and then you're <laughs> I could put a sock in my mouth. Here. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Is it better? Can you hear? Oh. <laughs> I'm holding a pillow to my face. <laughs> no, you're not. Stop. <laughs> I know. I know. I got a pillow again. Anyway, I don't think it's so. Yeah, I don't think it's what you're doing verbally as much as it is what you're doing energetically. I mean, you probably I know. probably the car is glowing. <laughs> you know, if it was over here in this time zone, it would probably be glowing. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not so much volume actually. It's you know if you think of the scale, do re mi fa so, and when you're singing so, you need to come down to me. You know, a ray. That's that's the thing. I see. So, so pardon me. Now, I would like two of you to join right now. I'd like to join me in, and you just I'll say it really slow, and you can repeat it after me. Okay, this is for the sleepers. Ah. Ah. Ganon, 
नकाती हवा में है कभी कभी नूम अमश्व वास्तमान जैश्यता चांद ब्रह्मिना ब्रह्मिना मस्पत अनाहा आसन बाने थी भी सीध सरनाम आ prayer to the elephant god Gana, Gana, Ganesh and um, I have found that this elephant god in the Hindu religion Ganesh is very 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 much based on the activities of the elephant in the jungle and an elephant herd in the jungle if it wants something to move out of its way guess what it moves out of its way <laughs> <laughs> the elephant so large it's the largest land mammal that we know and it will move the trees it will clear a path a herd of elephants will clear a path through a forest and through a jungle and so uh, quite naturally the the, uh, the Indian people at the time determined that the elephant is the remover of obstacles and For our sleepers, I always like to remove the obstacles that may be between them and their kundini as it teaches them the necessary lessons uh, for each of those individuals as they listen to our program. And so, my friends, my sleeping friends, know that just as the quality of the I'm going to have to hold still now. Everybody hold still. Just as the qualities of the elephant removes obstacles from the path, so does the shakti in my voice and in your bodies remove and hide obstacles in your path so that you may see and understand and make the appropriate choices in your life that those obstacles may not reform to block your progress. So my sleeping friends, Enjoy your slumber, enjoy your lessons, and go back, back into them, go back into them. Everybody, thank you, Fashti and Amelia, for joining me in that brief little message to our sleeping friends. You know, I used to do that too, you know, I would find a speaker that I liked and Jeez Louise, you know, I couldn't stay awake long enough, and I would just let it go in my sleep, and I found it very helpful. Have, have either of you done that? Yes, I, I've done this with your CD. Oh, well, wow. cool thing. Yeah. That's when you had a little nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting ready to say, I'm sorry, I've been remiss. <laughs> No, indeed not. My nightmare is yes, no. <laughs> John, what John's I would recommend. Yep, yep. John, John's going well. So have I. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would recommend it. John and I have on occasion put it on and and fallen asleep together. <laughs> oh, so yeah, it's. <laughs> But um, no, not every talk, night or anything. But on occasion. <laughs> talk about talk about tolerance. John's got a lot of tolerance. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, he actually has, in all fairness. But he also, um, yeah, well, he can speak for himself. <laughs> <laughs> very, very wise, wise choice. <laughs> I would recommend that, though, if anybody has the CD, and to listen to the sound of um, your voice prism and the Shakti coming through it. I mean, I know of no better thing to listen to, so anyway. <laughs> Except all the other CDs that you have in your car. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, I, I don't sleep. We're talking about when I'm going to sleep. <laughs> That's true. If anybody wants to, if anybody wants the CD, I believe I've seen... Her Holiness is handling this, and uh, you can contact Iloro at eloro55 at yahoo.com. So, eloro55 at yahoo.com. And, and she's from some coffee. Of course, I will. If anybody wants those coffees, please contact Eileen. 
and I think uh, they're charged for that because of the materials and the shipping. It's going to be three dollars more for anybody that's hearing overseas, which could be Europe or Asia, Africa, Australia, anybody overseas. Uh, Hawaii, I believe it's still the same, and the, the price is fifteen or eighteen, depending on where you live and how much postage is required for that. So, and for those of you at this particular moment can't afford it, well, just don't care. You know, let me know. And uh, and uh, at K Fire for All, K F I R E O R A L L at Yahoo dot com, and uh, make arrangements. Uh, it does seem to help people. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh Fashti just went and he took the sound with him. The, the the special effects are gone. <laughs> the, the Canadian sound. It's like the Irish sound. Yeah, I got that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, should we, Kristen? Should we um, speak with Eileen about the seminar? Please, yes. Put her on right now. Hey, Eileen. Hi, I'm here. To get your email. Do you want information about the seminar? The seminar is. Please. September- the seminar is Go September ahead. twenty. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> it's September twenty seventh and twenty eighth. It's being held in Egan, Minnesota, and it's about ten minutes from the airport. Uh, the hotel is Best Western in Egan, and there is a shuttle from the airport. So if anybody wants to come in, there's um, a shuttle. We have a reception on Friday evening for those who get in early enough. And what else? I mean, Prism will be in um, Minnesota the week before, and he's giving five talks in various venues throughout the Twin Cities. And what is the email? Oh, the email is Rosemary G at usinternet.com. That's Rosemary G at usinternet.com. Uh, and the phone number for those in the Twin Cities area or out of the area, 651-452-3161. Um, so we would love to have you visit and meet Chrism. And other Kundalini people or interested Kundalini people, uh, we're looking forward to it. Any other questions, Chrism? Oh, thank you, my dear. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Um, did I get your email right? I kind of heard it. It's E L O R O 55 at yahoo.com. Very good. I think you very good. Yeah, I got it right. And they can contact you for the CDs, right? Yes. All right. Very good, my dear. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Bye. All right, my my dear Amelia Centauri, any last words that you would like to say? No, Chris, and I think uh, just again to reiterate about the safeties and to to um for people to go and read the safeties and as you say, write them out, have print them out and place them in you know, areas of the house I think is very helpful initially anyway. So um thank you very much. That is this has been a really interesting um show, just like all of them. Um so see you again next week. All right, my dear. We'll see you again next week, and thank you. Yeah. Everybody, I would like to to say, uh, be forgiving. Use that powerful, powerful refinement platform. Be tolerant. Listen to your inner dialogue. Probably speaking way too loud now. Listen to your inner dialogue. Be as tolerant and forgiving as you can. Practice your emotional control every day, as much a day and night as you can. Begin to do this actively. Don't 
think that this is just something you do sometime or when you feel you need it. Do it all the time as much as you can and self-correct. Self-correct. If you find that your ego has, has co-opted a certain expression, you correct it. You take that expression. And remember, it's going to be a little difficult to determine what is your ego and what is your normal, higher mental functioning self. But if it has to do with fear, if it has to do with greed, if it has to do with power, position, it's going to be coming from your ego in these new uh, these new areas, this new landscape as you begin to work on your emotional body and your psychological ego body. Don't go off on people anymore. Don't go off on them. Think about what it is you do before you do it. Control your thoughts. Take control of your thoughts. And I know this is kind of counter to what some of the other teachers will say. Oh, just let the thoughts come and act on them as you No. No. Not with Kundalini. With Kundalini, it's different. When you have Kundalini, you have a very, very big footprint. Uh, a huge footprint. About a mile across. And you affect everybody. Some degree in the footprint. So you can take responsibility for your emotions. Responsibility for how your ego is interacting with you and do your best to open to Kundalini and let it flow as you work on the ego and your emotional controls. I'd like to thank you all for joining us in the show today. I would like to thank those in the archives who are joining this show later on. Hello to you. I would like to thank Amelia and Eileen, and Fashchi, and the other person that I'd like to thank all of you on the uh, chat room. Thank you very much for joining me, and I look forward to next week's program.